morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you've got questions about formulations, ingredients, a comment, or a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We love hearing from you. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, please call 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. That's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts, news stories, videos, and all the longevity products and the Join the Team Now link that you can click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business and helping change lives. At the most basic and fundamental level, there is the level of good health. If you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, you can do that as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can have a wholesale business have a retail business and get your products at the wholesale price. Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business as well. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. All right. So lots more to say about fats. So we've been talking about that here for a while. The three children of the fat family. It doesn't sound so great, but that's technically what it is. Fat is a family of molecules and has three, there's three categories in this fat family. The most misunderstood fat, cholesterol, the most electrical of the fats, the phospholipids, and uh, the most well-known of the fats, the triglycerides. The triglycerides are the ones that uh, we want to get rid of when we're, we want to get rid of some fat. You look at your, when you look at your uh, body, when you're 20 or when you're 30, or when you're 40, or when you're 50, in large part, the difference involves storage of triglycerides. Storage of triglycerides is what we mean when we, call, when we say fat storage, and storage of triglycerides is dependent on hormones, insulin especially, but also cortisol. And if you can't lose that body fat, rest assured, you got a problem with your insulin and your cortisol. Oh yeah, you can throw estrogen into the mix too. Between estrogen, cortisol, and insulin, you have the main reasons, the main biochemical reasons why we store triglycerides, why we store fat. That's what it means to store fat. We're not talking about storing cholesterol. We're not talking about storing phospholipids. We're talking about storing uh, triglycerides. Cholesterol is uh, probably the most misunderstood it's the most multifunctional and it's the most misunderstood and arguably it's the most important molecule of all molecules, fat or otherwise, in the body. And I personally think it is. Cholesterols are stress management, life management, growth and repair, general life handling molecule. And if you want to destroy the, cult, uh, uh, the health of a culture, of a civilization, you could do no worse, or you could do a lot worse, I should say, than to uh, uh, poison their cholesterol making system. Yes. I mean, I'm not going to go all conspiratorial here, but I'm just saying a statin drug is a great mechanism to destroy the health in one fell swoop of a civilization or of a culture of a society and to make sure that it's sick all the time. Stop it from making cholesterol. I don't know if it's intentional or not. 
But I'm just saying that if you wanted to, that would be a great way to do it. Put statins in the water. Or basically, oh, by the way, now they want to put you know, not just statins, but they want to release a lot of over the counter, a lot of RX drugs, and make them over the counter, a lot of high blood pressure drugs, a lot of diuretics, uh, statin drugs. There's a big push by the drug companies to uh, have these, all of these drugs be readily available to everybody. That's why I'm always suspicious when I, when I hear politicians talking about uh, making sure everybody gets their drugs, making sure we lower the drug costs, making sure we get government subsidies, making sure we've got insurance companies paying for drugs. And not just any drugs, but drugs off a specific formulary that drug companies have to lobby politicians to get on. Oh, the scandals. Anyway. Phospholipids, the second class of fats, are your electrical fats. In order to understand the fundamental nature and the critical role they play, you have to understand the basic axiom in biology, that is oil and water don't mix. This is a, in not just biology, but in all of chemistry, this is a basic fundamental principle. Oil and water don't mix. And that's, if you understand that, then you understand why the phospholipids are so important. The body is oil and water. Tissues are oil and water. Cells are oil and water. The brain, especially, is oil and water. The body is this homogenous blend of oil and water which don't mix. Well, what's up? They don't mix. How can the body be a homogenous blend of water? How can life be a homogenous blend of water? If oil and, uh, if, how can the, the body and life be a homogenous blend of oil and water if oil and water don't mix? Well... That's where the phospholipids come in. The phospholipids have a water side and a fat side. They pull them all together. They act like a bridge, an adapter, and you'll, that's why you'll always find phospholipids where you find membranes. Phospholipids are uh, um, the key component in all membranes, whether it's a cell membrane or whether it is a uh, lipoprotein membrane. We talked about yesterday VLDL and LDL and HDL. These are all phospholipids with, uh, with a, uh, the carry around cholesterol in the blood and carry around other fatty material in the blood. In the skin, we use phospholipids to create something called liposomes. You probably heard of a liposome. A liposome is basically oil and, uh, an oil and water blend where you have a phospholipid on the outside and you have uh, some kind of component on the inside that you want to deliver. Phosph uh, liposomes are delivery systems and they're used a lot in skincare. They're used a lot in, in drugs, in uh, uh, internal uh, drugs, for example. A lot of com will come in a liposome bubble. A lot of medication comes in a liposome bubble. Not a lot, but some medication comes in a liposome bubble too. So phospholipids are used in industry. They're used in skincare. They're used in uh, uh, for drugs. They're used in the body. If you may have heard of something called micellular water, micellular micellular water is a new kind of soap. It's a new kind of cleanser that takes advantage of the fact that oil and water uh, can form these little uh, sort of membranes together when they're combined with a soap. That's how it gets rid of your makeup. These micellar waters are basically creating little phospholipid bubbles on your face to get rid of your makeup without soap or with very little amount of soap. They're not that popular, but you start, I, I'm starting to see more of them around now. Micellar waters. If you're, in this, if you're a skincare junkie, I know a lot of you guys are skincare junkies. If you're in the skincare world, you know what I'm talking about. They're basically uh, take advantage of the fact that f you can form these little bubbles to get rid of your makeup. Anyway, phospholipids are incredibly important. Their nervous system especially because of their electrical nature. The phospholipids have a super electrical nature. That's how they pull oil and water together. And so you find them in the brain. You find them in, a, you find them in the nervous system. You find them in the digestive system as well. In fact, that's probably where they're, known, they're best known as digestive system molecules. And then there's the third, the triglycerides. Well, the triglycerides are the major form of fat in our body. That's what we think of when we think of fats. They're basically triglycerides. They're three fats attached to a molecule of glycerin, the same stuff you make soap with. And that's how they're stored. And they're stored especially, or they're ma manufactured especially, from sugar. Sugar gets, this is what it means when sugar gets turned into fat. We're talking about glucose getting turned into triglycerides. And it happens a lot. It's one of the body's protect, one of the ways the body protects itself. It's one of the body's protective mechanisms by storing these triglycerides, which are basically storage forms of glucose. Anytime it needs to have a little extra energy, it's got plenty around. And for most of us, it's got a lot of it around, which is a big problem, literally a big problem. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben eight four four two three six sixty ten. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll return right after this. We 
are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and also benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase longevity products off our websites or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And please don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products. Our new Truth Cleanser should be out, uh, if not today, Monday. We're shooting for today, but maybe Monday. Uh, that's what we're shooting for. You never know. It's crazy business. In all, in all business, you never know. In life, you never know. Life, you just never know. We try to control everything in life, but it just doesn't happen that way. You can't control all the variables in life, and you'll go nuts trying to. And understanding how to let go, or as an Alcoholics Anonymous AA or in the 12 Steps, they say, uh, "Give me, Lord, grant me the, the serenity to accept what is and the power to accept what isn't. Or something along those lines. The power to change what, to change what isn't, change what isn't, or uh, change what change some, certain things and accept other things, and the power to know the difference. That's the point. What you can change and what you can't change. Anyway, back to our story about triglycerides and fats. Triglycerides are how fats are stored. Sometimes you'll hear, and this is something we've only known about in the last maybe 20 years or so, 25 years, that our fat is actually a gland. Our fat produces hormones. Yes, there are hormones that come out of fat, but it's not the triglycerides. It's the fat cells. The fat cells, triglycerides are stored in fat cells. You're born with a certain amount of fat cells. And as we age, fat cells get bigger and bigger and bigger for most of us as our, our, our body stuffs triglycerides in these fat cells. These fat cells are hormones. And the more fat they have, the more hormonal activity they're going to have. That's very, very important because fat cells produce inflammatory hormones immune system activating hormones. And the more they're being fed with triglycerides, the more active they are. When your fat's really active, you're likely to inflame. Your fat cells, that is, are really active. You're likely to inflame, which is why losing body fat is so important. As we get older, the opposite happens. As we get older, especially, it's not supposed to happen that way, but the way we eat. Our standard American diet is so loaded with energy it's really, in, in many ways, pure energy. Soda pop, soda pop, for example, fruit juice, these are pure energy. You put pure energy in the body, that energy has to get, has, something has to happen with it. It's explosive. So the body has this incredible chemistry for turning the energy into triglycerides. And then the triglycerides get stuck in cells, fat cells. And uh, these fat cells now uh, become very active and, uh, from all that triglyceride. And uh, you get inflamed, and you have an activated immune system. Losing body fat is a major way to stay young, a major way to stay healthy, a major way to reverse chronic degenerative disease, especially if you're, and you can be skinny, by the way, and be carrying body fat. So just, it's, that's why weight is not a good indicator. It's the body fat. You don't, weight itself isn't really as, an, as important as lean muscle mass compared to body fat. It just turns out that for most of us, when we weigh 200 to 300 to 400 pounds, we don't have any lean muscle mass. It's mostly body fat. So essentially they're synonyms, but from a biochemical perspective, you really want, it's about losing body fat, not about losing weight, about losing stored triglycerides, helping the body store triglycerides. One of the best ways to help the body burn triglycerides is to use uh, is to uh, have lots of fat present, dietary fat present, but no sugar. If you have lots of dietary fat present, or, or I shouldn't say lots of dietary fat present, but if most of your calories are coming in through dietary fat and there's not a lot of sugar, the body will go into the production of ketones rather than triglycerides. And that's what you're looking for. You want the body not turning that sugar, not turning that energy into triglycerides, but turning that energy into ketones. Yeah, now you're talking. That's why the ketogenic diet works. That's why the ketogenic diet works for all chronic degenerative diseases. Because what it does is it allows your body to turn your stored triglycerides into energy. And your dietary triglycerides into energy much more efficiently. Ketones being much more efficient. Anyway, that's a little, I don't know if that's too much chemistry, but the bottom line is go ketogenic wherever possible. That's why you want to skip breakfast if you can. Your uh, fasting is essentially, uh, from a biochemical perspective anyway, it's the equivalent of a ketogenic diet. They both generate ketones. 
So when you break your fast, you stop going ketogenic. And that's why breakfast is the most important meal to skip. I know a lot of people disagree with that, but just from a biochemical perspective, the longer you can keep your body in fasting mode, the more likely it's going to be to generate those ketones, much more efficient uh, form, a much more efficient form of energy than, uh, than ordinary uh, fats and sugar. Uh, anyway, so you got two, uh, you got uh, three lengths of triglycerides, short, medium, and long. You got two triglycerides just, just stand out in importance, incredibly important. Well, I should tell you, there's saturated triglycerides and unsaturated triglycerides, hard triglycerides, uh, uh, liquidy triglycerides. Um, the liquidy ones are found in, uh, I'm sorry, liquid, liquid fatty acids and, and hard fatty and long fatty acids. The fatty acids are not the triglycerides. The fatty acids make up the triglycerides. Anyway. You got the two saturated, unsaturated, two of the sa unsaturated stand out in importance, and that's where I'm going with this whole thing. EFAs, essential fatty acids, ridiculously important. So important, it's almost impossible to describe. Are they hormones? Are they vitamins? Are they, are they uh, dietary fats? It, they're just incredible, standalone, singular molecules with so many roles to play in the body. It's... It's hard to understate, uh, to overstate how incredibly valuable these things are. Most importantly, and I hesitate to say that because there's so many important things they do, but most importantly, they're the molecules of inflammation. They get turned into inflammatory chemicals, and they get turned into anti-inflammatory chemicals. And when, I, when I say inflammation, I'm talking about the two phases of inflammation. So I should say the molecules of the inflammatory process. The inflammatory process is made up of inflammation and anti-inflammation. And we hear so many bad things about inflammation that we sometimes forget that inflammation is a good thing. Inflammation is really important. You can't be healthy without inflammation. Inflammation is the first phase of healing. Anti-inflammation is the second phase of healing. So when you cut yourself, which is a classic iconic example of what basically of what all disease is, miniature cuts, same kind of chemistry. The unity of all diseases is, is that all diseases are about cuts that aren't getting healed. That is wounds or trauma that is not reversing. That's what chronic degenerative disease is. Something uh, is breaking down and it's not reversing. And the initial phase of breakdown is the inflammatory phase. And it's required for the second phase to proceed. The problem is we get stuck in the first phase. We get stuck in the inflammatory process. We're constantly inflaming. We're never resolving. We're never anti-inflaming. Anti but inflammation is very important. That's why anti-inflammatory drugs are among the most toxic drugs you can take in terms of emergency room visits and in terms of kidney and liver toxicity. Because when you, And in terms of uh, side effects. There was a drug that came out a few years ago, an anti-inflammatory drug that would cause people to have heart attacks. They call, you may remember that, that's somewhere around the late 90s, early 2000s. They had to take it off the market because uh, it was killing people with heart attacks. Because when you mess around with the, cardio, with the inflammatory system, even if it's in the name of anti-inflammation, which sometimes can have a benefit, if you monkey around with it too much, you're going to run into side effects because inflammation is important. Everything the body does is important. And shutting anything down with a drug is really, really dumb. Unless you have no other options. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, fats or the ketogenic diet or skin health questions or formulation ingredient questions or a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Longevity products are up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, and all our truth skin health products at treatments.com. We have our, uh, our peppermint salicylic cleanser and our hyaluronic acid honey cleanser. Our two new cleansers will be out today or Monday. Um, shooting for today and also our connective tissue repair complex or collagen repair complex should be out today or Monday so if you haven't checked out our website recently or if you have never checked it out please take a look at truthtreatments.com all our truth treatment products are formulated by me based on 32 years of formulating actually how long have I been formulating since 1983 35 years of formulating skincare products 
And I, in that time, I've learned a lot about the skin. Back then, we didn't really know a lot about the skin. I, when I started um, my journey, my skincare journey, one of my jobs was to go to the, to the uh, library and do research. I had to do research on, I was working for the Blistex Corporation. I had to do a lot of research on lips and vitamin A and cholesterol and uh, various ingredients and how you make skincare products. And back then, there wasn't a lot of information about the skin. There wasn't a lot of information about skincare ingredients. It wasn't anywhere near the kind of business it is today. And we really didn't get going on understanding what the skin was until the 1990s. And most skincare products were formulated in the 1890s. This is the main reason why skincare people are so dissatisfied with their skincare regimens and skincare products and why there's such a sense of jadedness in the world of skincare. Oh, nothing works. Even the chemists have this sense because they haven't taken into account all of the new understandings of how the skin works and how ingredients work. And that's what true skin health is about. It's about leveraging all of these new understandings about the molecular and healing nature of the skin. The skin is the quintessential healing system. It's constantly healing. So if your skin is unhealthy, something's gone awry in the healing process. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You just got to figure it out. And all skin health issues are, uh, you can, are figure, figure outable. That's the right way of saying it are understandable if we understand how the body works. And that's what we talk about here every day. And the skin is just an icon, just an example of everything we talk about here on the bright side about how the body works. Good stuff in, bad stuff out. Simple as that. When it comes to the skin, you got to understand that what shows up on the skin is largely the end result of what's happening in the blood. And that is sometimes misleading. I've keep, we have psoriasis. We want a cream for it. We have eczema. We want to put something on it. We got acne. We want to rub something on those pimples. Now they got this Dr. Pimple Popper. I haven't, I haven't watched the show. I'm kind of scared to watch the show. It looks kind of disgusting, actually. Uh, I, hopefully, she's not all about popping pimples because popping pimples is not what acne is. or It's not what acne treatment should be, I should say. Acne is a blood issue. It's not a skin issue. It shows up on the skin. That's a very important understanding when it comes to the skin. And the health of the skin is the fact that just because it shows up on the skin doesn't mean it's, it starts off on the skin. In fact, that's a general principle of all health. Where the disease shows up is not where the disease starts. Where the disease shows up is not where you want to be if you want to really take care of the disease, unless you're a doctor. Now, if you're a doctor, that's different. And in fairness to doctors, that's their job is to take care of the symptom, to take care of the, uh, where the disease shows up. If we think they're there to eliminate the disease, we're not listening to they themselves because they will tell you there's no cure. Doctors will tell you there's no cure for your degenerative disease. Why is there no cure? Because they're not taking, they're not looking at the place where the disease started. <laughs> they're looking at where the disease shows up. Of course, there's no cure where the disease shows up. You can't cure the leaf by working at the leaf. You got to go to the root. Doctors work at the leaf. So, of course, there's no cure. Anyway, 844-236-6010 is our number. Get to a couple stories, then we'll get your calls. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. This is from the journal, uh, International Journal of Cancer. Late night snacking could lead to breast or prostate cancer. Eating your last meal of the day earlier, or at least before 9 p.m., helps lower your risk of breast and prostate cancer. And if you snack later than that, you'll get a similar protective effect if you wait two hours after eating before going to bed. In other words, don't eat right before you go to bed. Your body has to process food when it should be healing. Your body has to metabolize and digest and assimilate food when it would much rather be growing and healing. We grow and we heal. We anti-age while we sleep. So you want to have your food fully digested before going to bed. And it turns out, and that's not just logical, that's based on a study of the eating habits of 621 people suffering from prostate cancer uh, and 12,005 breast cancer patients. Meal, uh, compared them to 872 male and 1,321 1, female healthy controls. Long story short, have your food fully digested before you fall asleep and you can reduce your risk of, of prostate and breast cancer, which by the way, are, are very similar. Prostate and breast cancer have a lot of similarities. First of all, both are, are, are high ranking cancers, very common or relatively common cancers, breast and prostate cancer. I think they're like number one, n number two and number three. I think it's colon cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer, are the big three cancers. There might be one I'm missing in there. Lung cancer is probably up there. Um, anyway, so prostate, the prostate and the breast are both, both fatty tissue. 
And so for prostate cancer and for um, breast cancer, what you want to focus on is staying away from crappy fats and helping the body process fats at the probiotic level, at the fiber level. This is for prostate cancer and for breast cancer, not just for uh, uh, preventing it, but also for reducing its progression if you have a, a early stage cancer. Fiber, probiotics, fatty vitamins, especially vitamins A and vitamins E and vitamins D, you could throw in K in there, essential fatty acids, help your body process them with digestive enzymes and apple cider vinegar, and most importantly, make sure you're moving your lymph, which carries all of these fats. Make sure you're exercising and breathing deeply and doing lymphatic drainage. Anything you do to move your lymphatic system will help prevent, uh, prevent fatty cancers and will reduce the likelihood of the progression of fatty cancers, i.e. breast cancer and, uh, and prostate cancer. Also zinc, by the way, is also important for the fatty system and selenium now that I think about it. Zinc and selenium, two fatty minerals. All right, uh, breast screening, no benefit. From, uh, this is from the British, Medi British Medical Journal. While doctors consider stepping up breast cancer screening, new data has revealed a regularly screened woman who develops cancer is no better off than a victim who has never had a mammogram. Leaving aside the fact that how intelligent can it be to have a, a patient stick their breast, a fatty tissue, and shoot it up with radiation, which is one of the most carcinogenic substances, carcinogenic stuff, it's not a substance, it's energy, carcinogenic things you could do to your body is shoot it up with radiation and you're going you're gonna to stick your breast in the machine and shoot it. That's why more and more we're, we're reading about how mammograms are best avoided. Do a thermogram if you absolutely want to be have detection. Thermogram works as well and, uh, and it doesn't involve radiation. It involves heat. So get a thermogram instead of a mammogram if you really want to know what's going on in your breast. All right, 844 is our number. And uh, let's say good morning real quick to Virginia. Might have to put you on, back on hold there, Virginia. What's going on? Hi. I'm hey. calling for my sister. Okay. And she's been on the keto diet for probably four or five months. Yeah. Her blood sugar is not coming down. And we'll help her. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to okay. help you. Don't go away. I'm going to help you. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after this. We're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lots of lines open for you. We're talking to Virginia. Hey, Virginia. Yeah. In Ohio. Hi. Hi there. Where in Ohio? Uh, Mansfield. Where's that? Uh, between Cleveland and Columbus. All right. Okay. So you're in the country? Is that considered? Um, somewhat, yeah. All not, right. Yeah. All right. Well, good deal. So uh, your sister's on the ketogenic diet. Did yeah, you say your sister? Problem. Go ahead. You said your sister, right? Yes. All right. And she's not, she, her blood sugar's not going down, and that's yeah, not uncommon. I hear that all the time. She's I'll, barely losing weight, but she also it, has a life low thyroid, taking Synthroid. She's under extreme stress with her husband in the nursing home. Oh, my she's, goodness. And she works in Columbus, so she's... Driving around. How old, can I ask you how old she is? Uh, 63. Okie dokie. Is she needs to, need to lose some weight? Yes. Oh, yeah. She's like, like 230. She had her gallbladder out last oh, year. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> well, we got a lot of stuff to work on here, but that's not necessarily impossible. But you got to start somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you're starting off in the right place by going ketogenic. But can you turn your, is your radio up? Uh, it's, is that okay. better? Yeah, that's much better. Okay. Okay, okay so uh, uh, so going ketogenic is defi yeah. definitely the first thing that you want to uh, definitely the first thing you want to do. She's smart to do that, but she's not going. She's not in ketosis, so she's not doing it correctly. Very common. Uh, because for a couple reasons. Because when we hear ketogenic, let me just ask you this: What do you think the ketogenic diet is? How would you describe it to me? Um, very low carb. Um, yeah. Lot, lots of good fats, yeah. um, meats and veggies. Yeah. Um, it's, See, you're missing the you most know, important part, and everybody misses the most important you burn, part. You, where you burn your fat rather no. than muscle. No. The most important part of the ketogenic diet is it is a very, very low-calorie diet. 
It's a fasting diet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You don't get to eat on the ketogenic diet. It's true that you're a high percentage of those calories are come from fat, but that's not the same as high fat. Do you, do you see this? What I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So yes, it's true. Ninety per eighty, ninety percent, seventy to ninety somewhere in there percent of your calories need to come from fat. But that doesn't mean you eat a lot of it. <laughs> It means you keep your calories to just like 1,200 a day kind of thing, 1,300 a day. So it still requires caloric restriction. Okay. The second element that people miss is, or the second biochemical fact that people miss, is that protein gets turned into sugar if you're not using it. So if she's like most people, I don't know that she is, but I'm just most people do this. They'll eat hamburgers and they'll eat steak. And uh -huh. eggs and fish, fish and, all and all this great high protein, protein food, food, but their, their body, body doesn't need the protein, protein because, because they're not they're doing it. They're not working out. out. They're, they're not, not repairing or recovering from surgery. From surgery. You know, there's, not, there's not, a not a lot of demand, demand for protein. For protein. Uh -huh. When there's no there's building no demand for protein, 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 that protein gets turned into sugar. sugar. And now, now your body, your body has, has another source, source of energy. Of energy. The, tr the key is you want to deprive the body of sources of energy so it's forced to burn fat. Uh -huh. you, with you with me? me? If, you yeah. if you don't deprive the body of caloric, caloric energy, energy, you don't, you don't deprive, deprive the body of sugar, sugar energy, energy, it's not going to need to burn the fat. fat. Uh -huh. It's going to burn the sugar uh -huh. that's, that's, that's getting from the protein, and it's going to burn the calories, uh -huh. basically, which are basically sugar for, most, for the most part. So you got to keep the protein down to a minimum. you got to work out, and you've got to keep your calories down. Okay. If you do all three, three of those elements, elements it's, almost it's almost impossible not to go into ketosis, ketosis at, which, at, which, at which point, point your, blood your blood sugar will drop. Will drop. Uh-huh. All right. So, so uh, okay. you want to focus on – now, there's another element to add a wrinkle here is the cortisol. You've heard that – I'm sure you've heard yeah. that term, stress yeah. hormone. Yeah. That will also cause blood sugar to go up. Okay. So, because so when the body's under stress, it, it, it releases sugar, sugar from the liver. The liver. Blood sugar goes up to, so you can, you can run, run from the tiger. The tiger. You uh -huh. don't run from the tiger, that, that it's not going to need to burn the sugar. sugar. That sugar goes back into storage as fat in your fat cells. Mm -hmm. So, you just keep the stream of when your cortisol is high and you're under stress, you keep the stream of chemistry going where the, the fat comes out of the liver. It goes, raises the blood sugar, blood sugar goes up, it goes back into storage and fat cells, and you keep getting the stream of energy into the fat and fat cells. So you got to keep your cortisol down. That's well, another element. You can do that with her stress level. A lot. Right now. <laughs> well, she doesn't say, well, you know, you raise an interesting point, and let me tell you why. There's two kinds of stresses. There's a psychological stress, and then there's a physiologic stress, and both are equivalent to the body. Like you, and you, when I said stress, you immediately thought of the, you know, her life, and that's understandable because that's definitely a form of stress. Uh, there's stress management that she's going to deal with there. Life has inherent stresses, and learning how to manage it is stress is the key there. But there's also physiologic stresses. There's also the kind of stresses that the body has from toxicity, that the body has from too much energy, that the body has from inflammation, and the fact that she's hypothyroid means she's not going to be able to handle it that well. So what you got to do is you got to start where you can start. And where the first thing to do is to go ketogenic correctly. Uh, it would absolutely, absolutely make a huge difference for her because she's probably burning through nutrients very quickly. She basically could be functionally starving, malnourished anyway, uh, for her to get on a supplement program, especially water-soluble electrical nutrients like the B vitamins, vitamin C, and electrolytes. Where do you get those? Beyond Tangy Tangerine. She does take that. Does she sip on it all day long? Uh, she might it, take one scoop a day. Have her sip on it all day long. Sip all day long. Okay. So all day long when she runs, put, take a scoop, put it in a water bottle, sip okay. on it slowly. When you run out, do it again. Another scoop, sip on it slowly. You do half a scoop, you know, whatever tastes good. I, I go by taste because if it doesn't taste good, you're not going to drink it. So find it. It's okay for her weight. It's not so much as okay as whether she'll drink it, whether it tastes good to her, whether it's palatable. They put a lot of sweetener in there, not sugar, but they, they have flavoring agents in there, and some people don't like it, and then they won't drink it. So you got to find where that place is where you like it. And then, and then drink, drink it slowly, slowly throughout, throughout the day. It's better, better that she, she does, does something, something than not at all. all. So if she, so it doesn't she taste good, she's not going to do it. Do it. Right. You follow me? Yeah. 
Okay. okay. Then uh, have her doing veggie juices. Get a Vitamix. Have her working on um, working di on digestive health with digestive enzymes and probiotics. Uh, there's so many ways you can go. Here, here's the good news. There's so many ways. Well, let me get the bad news first. She needs to get going quickly because she doesn't. Have, her window is, is closing. The good news is, is if she gets going right away, she's going to make a significant difference. And this is true for everybody out there who's dealing with a with a whole convoluted uh, a mass of symptoms. Systems, where you have so many different things going wrong in the body. Start off with liquid nutrition, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Focus on the gut with a ketogenic diet, calorie restriction, and probiotics and digestive enzymes. Use vegetable juices and also soups. And then, and then uh, throw in fermented, fermented foods, foods as well. well. That alone, and, 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 and get, get on a good, good well, well, healthy, healthy star, star pack, pack so you have all your basic, mighty, non essential nutrients. nutrients. That, that alone, alone will make a significant, significant difference in helping the body turn anything around. around. Now, you, now can you can fine tune, tune it later with zinc and magnesium and selenium and the fucoid Z. You can spend a lifetime fine tuning, but start the longest journey begins with a single step. Start off, off somewhere, somewhere, and the best place to do it is with the digestive system, system as, well as well as the blood sugar system, system which, which we'll, we'll do with the ketogenic diet and the calorie, calorie restriction, restriction, relaxing the body, lowering, lowering the cortisol, the cortisol levels, levels, and then and getting on a good, good nutritional supplement program. program. And, and, and of course, the soups, soups the, the soups and the, and the uh, veggie juices too, too as, as I mentioned. And then later on, you can fine tune things. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, good deal. Thanks so much for your call, Virginia. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah, that's that's not just information for Virginia. That is information for anybody who's dealing with a long-term chronic health challenge. This this message should be inspiring to anybody who wants to turn it around. The body can turn it on, turn, turn it on a dime. We got to help it. The body can turn on a dime, but we got to turn on a dime first. That means any long-term chronic degenerative disease is reversible, not curable, reversible. Cure is magic. Cures don't happen. Reversals do. Reversal is science. Cure is magic. Cure is in the realm of the witch doctor and the shaman, perhaps. But uh, reversal is in the realm of biology. It's in the realm of science. It's in, in the realm of the body. And we all have access to this amazing, healing, renewing, regenerating, reversible body system, body processes, biochemistry. All right. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. That's all the time we have for today. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If, if this message of empowerment turns you on, it's going to turn a lot of other people on. You could have a nice, healthy little business helping spread the word. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.